Lizzie Kaplan uh, starring on Masters of Sex on Showtime in its first season. And um, tell us what intrigued you about this role, because Virginia Johnson, uh, at least in the interpretation your show has and that you have, she's a very strong, tough, committed lady. Yeah, and usually I would not want to play somebody so strong, tough, and committed. I find I'm drawn to weak, weak women, except... <laughs> Ever, I, I, for that reason, for what you said, I mean, it's not every day you read a script that has a character as complicated and layered and strong as this one, and so it was pretty much a no-brainer from the first time I read the script that I, I really wanted to go after it. And like, I guess in in one sense, um, like you get this character, you get this pilot script, and you go, "This is a great character. I want to, I want to go after it." But I guess it also is a bit of a commitment that you you have, you know, like this is not just the pilot script, but you're committing to a whole season, and if the show's successful, even more seasons of Massive Sex. Um, how did you approach to that decision to go, nah, this is a show I want to get into bed with? Well, I've done a fair amount of television over the course of my career, and I really like television. Um, I think back when I started, back in the day, it felt like... Um, felt more like a jumping off point to become an actress in film, but I don't think uh, that's how it is anymore at all. I think that cable television is equally as compelling, if not more compelling, as best movies that they're making right now. And the schedule is such that you work four and a half, five months a year, feels like one long film, and you get to tell a story that just happens to be 12 hours long. Um, being on cable is a lot different than being on a network television show where it does seem like you have to have a beginning, middle, and end to each episode. Cable, we can tell one story over 12 hours, and that's always been kind of my dream job. I love the variation of television, getting a new script every 10, 11 days. I like working with the same people. I like working with the same character, but given more opportunities to show different sides of her. You know, a movie you just, you have one script and you work on it for as long as it takes to shoot it, and TV, the pace is super, super fast, and you get a new story all the time. So, I just, I, it's sort of my favorite way to work, I think. Well, speaking of being on cable, uh, your show definitely takes advantage of all the freedom that cable provides, premium cable provides. I don't Was know there, you, uh, you, you, you don't get to do anything. You get to say anything. Was there any hesitation at all on some of the things that you are doing and saying? I, of course. I mean, it's a show called Masters of Sex. It's about sex. We show a lot of sex in our show, a lot of nudity. But every show on premium, ca premium cable is, there's this expectation that you're going to see nudity. And so all these shows are about everything else in the world, but they're not about sex. And so we talk about this a lot on our show, that it, it seems to be like, okay, you, you do a television show that's about dragons or prisons or anything. And, like, I'm a huge uh -huh. fan of these shows. But you have to take a break to show sex for a few minutes. Uh, our show, Sex is completely integrated into the story at all times. There's no romanticized version of sex. We don't cut from the narrative to show like two people really loving having sex with each other. I mean, unless they have wires and stuff hanging off of them. I think we show all different kinds of sex and very, very... <laughs> it's not often that we show positive, beautifully films where both uh, both characters are super happy to be there or whatever. I think it's it's a very layered way to show sex and it's not showing it in the pretty way. Um, and I really appreciated that. I also think that at first blush it seems like our show is purely about sex, but the reality is our show is about relationships and it's about intimacy and how sex, even when you set out to keep it very, very separate from emotional attachment and love, it's impossible and it becomes very, very messy for humans. When we spoke with uh, Alice and Jenny last week, she talked a bit about like, you know, first having to sort of take a step back and go, oh, okay, what is the show I'm getting in involved in and things like that. Um, and I, I, but she said that she was given very uh, strong assurances by the people running the show that uh, the uncomfortable scenes in, in Master's Sex would be done 
yeah, very sensitively and sort of in a comfortable way and it would always fit within the story. Is that what you've found with how they've uh, approached those scenes or has there been any that you've found a bit like, ooh, not sure about that one? No, absolutely, I do. I don't think that I would be okay with scenes uh, that didn't feel like they were perfectly in line with the story. It's a different situation when you're one of the main characters on a show and your voice is heard in that regard. Like, I would probably buck against that a bit and not, so to speak, and not want to... I, I don't want to do uh, gratuitous nudity for absolutely no reason. Like, it's... And I don't think many actresses would say that they do want to do gratuitous nudity, but I believe in this show, and any moments of hesitation that I had, I reminded myself that I'm playing a real person, and this is a true story, and whatever discomfort I may be feeling on set, surrounded by very, very supportive crew members who light me beautifully and shoot my body beautifully, as opposed to Virginia Johnson, who did this in real life with masters in a hospital room, and I think that my job is a whole hell of a lot easier than hers was. Speaking of playing her as a, you know, a real-life person, what kind of research were you able to do? And uh, I, She passed away not, like earlier this year, right? I mean, did you get a chance to talk with her at all? I did not. Um, she passed away right before our show premiered, actually, a few months before. And no, she, uh, there's not a ton of information about the two of them, personal information. Um, they really believed in letting the work speak for itself. And so Tom Mayer, who wrote the book, Masters of Sex, that our show is based on, that's pretty much like as much information as, as one could get about the relationship between the two of them. They didn't give interviews about their personal lives. Uh, and so we all read that book, and it's amazing. And that was kind of it. I mean, I... She didn't, Virginia had no interest in being involved with the show. It seemed like she wanted to live the rest of her life out of the spotlight, especially after she gave all those uh, hundreds of hours of interviews for the book. And so I was hoping that when the show came out, maybe she'd get swept up in, in people liking it, and maybe she would like it, and she would want to, you know, be best friends. But unfortunately, I never got the chance to see if that would come to pass. And it's really, it's very, very sad. We were all extremely sad about this woman who we had spent so much time with in our brains but had never actually met. It is really interesting, the character of Virginia, and uh, probably the most interesting thing is her relationship with Will and the dynamics that she has with Will. And they've just started the last couple of episodes uh, doing the study together. And I, I, love, I love the scenes whenever... Uh, uh, you know, Will or Virginia says to each other, um, says, um, uh, says, you know, oh, uh, tonight we're going to continue the research. Uh, I always like that. Um, who in that, yeah, who in that relationship do you think has the power, like, or, or is the the high status? Well, I think it's a, it's an interesting question. Um, on paper, of course, Masters has all the power. Hmm. He is established in this community, he's established in this hospital, he is a very respected member of the medical community, and Virginia has no college degree. She's just trying to get a job and a, and a degree so she can support her family without getting married again. Um, and so at, at first glance, I think it seems like he holds all the cards. I mean, it's up to him whether she keeps her job or not, whether she can stay in that hospital he calls the shots. But as soon as she does start undertaking the research with him, she knows that she just made herself nearly impossible to replace. Uh, there's not a lot of women who would sign up for this type of job. And her enthusiasm uh, for the project, you know, means that she she's not going to... I never saw Virginia, like, using the, the sex part of it as a power play over Bill, but I did see her as seeing that as something that solidified her standing in the partnership. He knows pretty early on that he could not do this without her, and she's aware of that too. I mean, her people skills make up for his complete lack of <laughs> personality that's like at all 
conducive to like making people do anything that makes them uncomfortable. I mean, that you see him try to discuss things with patients and you know sensitive topics, and he's kind of useless. She's great at that, uh, but she needs his you know expertise, obviously. And he's the one who's he's the one who's steering the ship. But without her, there really is no ship. But I, I know that Michael and I, I mean, we talked a lot about wanting to keep that those lines very, very blurry about, you know, who has the power, because I think that the power, it shifts rapidly even in each episode. I mean, there's, there are moments where he seems very enamored with her and she is pulling away from him and vice versa. I mean, they never seem to be, like, they, they refuse to be on the same page in terms of, like, the intimacy that comes along with it, but it is the constant push and pull of, who does hold the cards, who does have the power. But at the end of the day, I do think a lot of the times Virginia's, like I think about it in like a, like a lion tamer almost, and she has her stool and she has her whip, and so she can, you know, she has these weapons against this lion, but at the end of the day, if the lion wanted to kill her and attack her, then he could. And I think it's just trying to walk that line as in, a, in as confusing a way as we possibly can to keep audiences interested. I want to talk about awards a little bit. We've got Golden Globes and SAG Awards coming up next, and uh, we, we all feel like, if you look at our Prediction Center, a lot of people feel like you and Michael and the show are going to be seeing some of those. Um, really? Oh, absolutely. I think, especially the Globes, they love first-year shows. They love shows that are very stylish like this one, and uh, I think a character like yours that's so dynamic, has a lot of personality is going to appeal to them. Well, that would be really exciting. And if it doesn't happen, I guess I can call you and ask you what happened. <laughs> well, we, we, uh, we'll, we'll try to figure that out later on. But I wanted to ask, you know, down the road next summer, uh, if you get into that Emmy pool, you'll have to pick one episode from this season. And we were talking to Michael about this. You know, any episode for, for his character where he shows emotion, that's got to be his Emmy episode. But yeah. for you, you show emotion... You you have you leave no thought unspoken your character. So is there any particular highlight episode for you from this first season? I mean, to be honest, I think that I would be the last person I would look to 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 make that choice for myself. Um, I've found with this show, I'm completely incapable of being objective when it comes to my own performance. And I was actually getting better at that as an actress. Like, I, I wasn't so fixated on um, how my face moves <laughs> in, a, in a bunch of years. And now I'm like, I can't, I can't watch it objectively. And so I, can't, I would never be able to tell which episode uh, I would submit. I would leave that to the people I pay. Well, those people in Showtime, the ladies at Showtime really know what they're doing. I mean, obviously, you've, you've seen how well they've done with Homeland and some of the others lately. Um, yeah. The only thing I would say to just think about, of course, we haven't seen the last couple of episodes, so right. something may be coming up that we don't know about, but that pilot for you, I think so establishes your character and what she will do, what she won't do, what her goals are. Um, that one, pilots are often very good for Emmy voters because they may not watch the show either, so they, you know, it's a good introduction to them as well. Okay, then I'll send them the pilot. No, 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 no. I'm just saying think about it. <laughs> I love the pilot. Uh, that's the only episode that I've seen more than once, maybe twice. I've seen the pilot a bunch, and I like it. I mean, I was with a, a lot of the cast members yesterday at a benefit, and it was the first time we'd all been around each other, this handful of us, uh, since it had aired. And and then when I talked to Michael and, and Caitlin about it, it really feels like this group of actors that just fans out on each other. Everybody's so super impressed with, with everybody else's performance. It, it feels really good. So it would be nice if people recognized our show, of course. Now, uh, just about an hour ago, we uh, spoke to Michael Sheen, and um, we asked him if he had any questions he'd like asked of you, because we said we were speaking to you a bit later. And uh, he was... Uh, he, yeah. so, so brace yourself, Lizzie. Oh, <laughs> He, he was wondering if you could maybe explain the significance of Chris Wilson to the series. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I'll tell you about Chris Wilson. I'll tell you everything okay. you want. <laughs> There's these uh, these models of little fetuses in master's office. And, you know, there's like six or seven of them, and they get progressively bigger. And Chris Wilson, I think, is like the seven-month plastic fetus. And Chris Wilson um, is like Michael's evil soul, and, and he tells Michael what to do all day long. But he's just he named him. Fetus. Michael did. <laughs> Michael did. <laughs> Yeah, we were afraid to ask the question. We didn't know what we were getting ourselves in for, so that's not true. That's not what you thought I was going to say? Obviously, that's what Chris Wilson is. He's the plastic fetus that tells Michael what to do. <laughs> hey, we've got our chat that. room open, and there's a couple of good questions in there I wanted to ask you, if you don't mind. Go for it. We've mostly known you for comedy over the years. What? What? Uh, this is Bruna Garcia asking, uh, oh. what's, what's the difference for you in making a drama as opposed to a comedy? Uh, I mean, I, they're they're completely different. They're just completely different. Uh, luckily, the things that I gravitate towards are dramas that have real comedic elements to a, to them, and comedies with the serious emotional through lines. That's my favorite stuff to watch, and that's certainly my favorite stuff to make. So there are like funny moments in Masters of Sex, although we're not generally playing things for laughs. Uh, and in a way that takes a lot of pressure off. There's, so it's like being on a comedy set is, can feel sometimes like a pressure cooker because you have to be funny, and that's to me something super terrifying and exhilarating and wonderful. And this idea of like, don't be the weakest link, don't be the weakest link, I, I, that resonates louder with me on comedy sets. That being said, that's where I feel more comfortable. That sort of healthy competitive atmosphere. And drama is just also terrifying in different ways, but uh, at least we're not like trying to one up each other jokes wise, though not on camera. We're not. Hmm. Well, speaking, speaking of the comedies, um, like Party Down is a show that just like has had an incredible, it wasn't the, top ra the highest rating show when it was on the air, but has developed a real cult following over the years. and. The people who uh, people who love Party Down do love pa Party Down. It's a very passionate uh, yeah. support uh, following. What what was it like being uh, part of uh, Party Down, and sort of what's your experience with uh, fans of that? Maybe even since the show's uh, been off the air. Yeah, well, it's nice that you said it wasn't the highest rated show instead of it was the lowest rated show, which I think <laughs> accurate. We, I mean, yeah. it's. It's pretty funny if you if you dig up the ratings uh, for that show, but we had the cast of that show. It was one of those very special jobs, and we knew it. I think within two weeks of each other. I mean, we shot ten episode seasons. We had no money. Nobody was getting paid. We shot each episode in four days, and ten weeks in a row, and then it was done, and then we took a break obviously, and came back for a second season. All of our agents and managers advised us not to come back for a second season because it was lucratively just a bad call. Nobody was watching the show. But it did something to me, and I, I know that it did something to a lot of the other people, if not all of us, where it, it clicked for me, like, oh, this is the only way it should be on a set. This feeling of just not only, like, personal camaraderie, but we believed so much in this thing that we were making and I mean they, we believed in it so much that we didn't care that nobody else seemed to notice that we were making it. It was just so creatively fulfilling in every way and it was very hard when it ended but after it ended it took on this whole other thing. I mean we, people started watching it after it was done and I have a soft spot for every single person who tells me they like Party Down still because it's still my first reaction is, you've seen Party Down? That's Wow, really? Even though now, you know, people know what it is. It took a few years after being canceled, but now a decent amount of people have heard of it, at least. Yeah, good luck if they want to reunite you all now at your current salaries. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't care about our salaries back then. I don't think they would care about them now. And I think that we would all do it for the same terrible, terrible, terrible wages. Uh, <laughs> another question I see in the chat room is uh, Ezra May. Ezra May says, um, 
if someone were to see your work for the first time, what television show or film would you like for them to see first? Wow. Um, that should be an easy question, and yet it's not an easy question. Uh, maybe I would say, maybe I would say Party Down. I'm, I'm very, very proud of it. Uh, and then I would want them to watch Masters of Sex right afterwards, because <laughs> that's, that's the one-two punch that I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, it's weird. I'm very pr when I watch stuff that I'm in, it's usually I think everybody else is amazing, and I'm super proud of everybody. I can't believe I get to be around them. But if I were to give an episode or a show recommendation to somebody about myself, it's, I think that it still throws me for some reason. Well, for that person that hasn't seen Party Down, if, if they said, I, I keep hearing about it, I, I would like to check it out. Tell me. You got one shot here. Tell me one episode that I should watch that, that would make me want to watch more. The Steve Gutenberg episode. That's all of our favorite episodes. But I don't know if it would resonate so much if you didn't watch the whole series, which is only 10 hours total. So I think that people could probably get it done. Once you watch one, you really can't stop. It's like the, the television version of a Pringle. Ten hours. That's like you know one and a half Hobbit movies. So yeah. should be should be pretty easy to burn through. Exactly. It's just like a Hobbit movie or two. It's the same thing. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and at, at the moment, Lizzie, you're working on a film with uh, Seth Rogen and James Franco in Canada. Is that a lot of fun? It is a lot of fun. I go up uh, to Canada and I come back down a lot. So I'm it's, I'm too busy to stay up there with not like work stuff, with, with life stuff. And so I keep coming down here and uh, it's a little like I'm getting a little bit of whiplash from all the traveling. I kind of wish that I went up there and just like stayed put. But of course it's really fun. I haven't worked with those two guys together since Seth and I were 15 on Freaks and Geeks, which is crazy. Uh, but we've all, you know, we run into each other a lot, and they're great. I mean, Seth's a really good director, as well as being hilarious, and James is uh, totally, like, insane talent, and is doing really weird stuff in this movie, and I think people are going to think that it's very fun. I imagine that's a different work environment than uh, Masters. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Although, at the end of the day, I mean... It's still a group of actors sitting around trying to make each other laugh as the hours turn into days. Like, you're around these people a lot. I have yet to be, even though Masters of Sex is a, is a very dramatic piece and we tell a lot of very, very sad stories, the vibe on set is still, you know, we try to keep each other laughing. Oh, well, uh, thanks so much, uh, Lizzie, for spending your time with us today and talking about uh, Masters of Sex with us. Um, and, yeah, just uh, all the best with the show and I uh, hope uh, when you guys are, are back for Season 2, you and Michael Sheen and uh, Chris Wilson all have a good time together. <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk to Chris Wilson. When I get really oh. mad at people, I hide him and freaks out. But I'm glad you know about it now and I'm glad everybody knows about it now. And <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry for my very, very long, really rambly question or answers to your question. There's something about looking at myself while I answer a question that just makes me talk more. Well, th thanks for joining us today. Thanks, guys.